and welcome to the show. I'm Jenna Morton. And I'm Tosh Taylor. And if you're watching us online, you can tell that we are at home again. Or <laughs> I look another... like I'm in a dungeon. I'm like, <laughs> you're in the, uh, the darkness. yes, it's very dark in your studio. Mine's all like bright and sunny and flowers. Like, come on, spring. Yeah. I'm just blocking out the fact that it's a snow day before March break. <laughs> amen to that <laughs> oh yeah it's uh you know this has been quite the winter we have not had a winter like this in New Brunswick in quite a few years and uh I'm I'm glad for the people who enjoy snow and all the ski hills and all that great stuff but man oh man I am ready for it to be gone yeah me too <laughs> me too we did these web polls uh for the radio stations that i work for all across the maritimes and it was um have you thought this has been a good winter good bad or you know somewhere in between and on every single radio station everybody said it had been a great winter and i was like am i the only one living in moncton <laughs> right now <laughs> it's great if you enjoy winter if right. you wanted snow if you like to ski if you like to skate outdoors it's been great if you yeah. like snow days at home it's great if you don't <laughs> <laughs> And yeah, we're ready. We're, we're, we're ready. ready for, <laughs> yeah, for bring spring. me some tulips, first. some grass. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Before we get to that, though, yes. we need to get through March break. That's right. And this is airing on the first day of March mm -hmm. break. And I know that a lot of us parents go, oh, my God, what am I going to do with these kids this week? So Jenna has got that plan for us, which I think is absolutely spectacular. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I, I don't do the planning necessarily. Just <laughs> gathering all the information I can find for you. <laughs> and that's really, you know, what I've done on Pickle Planet since it started back in 2015. You know, it started with the weekly roundups of what was happening on the weekend. And, you know, I started just before the summer. So the first like 2016 would have been the first big like March break roundup. And I looked back at them this morning, actually, Tosh, and 2018 was the year of just craziness like the list is massive the number of people that looked at that list wow tens of thousands <laughs> like no it's crazy wow crazy crazy and so part of what happens with the numbers just you know like for people who understand websites obviously is that it got so much traction that it still pops up sometimes for people if they're looking for March break. So I went back today. That was what I was doing was going back and making sure that every time my website mentions March break right there. Now you'll see the link to this year's information. <laughs> That's a good idea. <laughs> Which, you know, it was really interesting to do looking back over, like, like I said, like 2018 was kind of a really exciting time in Moncton because there were a lot of things that were kind of opening and just really gaining steam, right? We had all kinds of indoor attractions that were still kind of new and exciting and people were really into going out and doing things and there was all kinds of free things happening in the community and 2019 was still really busy but not quite we'd had a few things already kind of shut down and change hands hmm. and then we got into the pandemic so even though the 2020 March break happened and there were events people already knew that things were in the works and something was going to change. And mm -hmm. you, know, you can tell just from the amount of stuff and the amount of eyeballs on the page that things were a bit different last year. We couldn't even leave our zones, right? We were like full on in things last year. Mm -hmm. And now just before March break and kind of just after March break, the province has changed what it's doing. And so there's this huge excitement among families again for a lot of people that they are expecting a whole bunch of things there's a lot of anxiety from other families who are like oh my goodness I'm staying home for the week and the the events in the community kind of match that like there's there's a little trickle of things that popped up just over the last week that okay. hadn't been announced already um that you can tell like they must have been in the works and just kind of waiting there are other things that you know, some of the indoor attractions, they just get to be like, yep, okay, now we, you know, we can have more people in the building, mm -hmm. we can have more reservations. But it's not quite what it used to be like. And what I'm noticing is that what we're really missing out on this year are the free events. Okay. There's not as many of the free or inexpensive things. So 
one thing that used to happen a lot during March break was you would see specials, right? The bowling alley would have $2 bowling or $5 bowling. The movies would have, you know, their two, $3 movies and a bunch of little kid movies in the mornings. Mm -hmm. Those things aren't happening again yet. Shoot. I love those. Yeah. I I love going to the movies. It's like my, I adore (laughs) taking my kids to the movies. The movies are still open. Mm -hmm. You're just not going to have that same experience that, you know, we used to associate with March break with those, yeah, two, $3 specials for, you know, older movies. Um, it's the Hopefully earlier in the will. day. I like it's, the earlier in the day movies. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And even that there's, there's some that are like afternoon, but they haven't announced any of those morning shows. And so I'm not expecting that that's going to pop up in time here on the East coast anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, especially, you know, our March break is really early compared to most of the yes. country. So, um, other than the prairies and the prairies, they, they seem to do like end of February. Right. Um, But yeah, it's, it's a strange time. So a lot of these corporations Mm -hmm. aren't necessarily thinking in terms of March break yet, or, you know, what's happening too is, you know, we used to see a lot of free things happening inside, you know, chapters and scholars choice, and there'd be just lists and lists of things you could go to. A lot of these corporations, even though the provincial rules may have changed, they have corporate rules that haven't necessarily trickled down yet either. Mm -hmm. So we don't have all of those things that used to be on the list as well. But all that said, there's still a bunch of stuff going on. Yeah, I know. I'm scrolling <laughs> through your, your sheet and, and, uh, I think it's fantastic because I, I, I am home with my two daughters and I did plan a couple of things, right? Like we, we have, um, the first weekend we're going to go to a hotel that has a pool. Everybody needs to get like, I mean, why do you go to a hotel without a pool? I'm not sure. Uh, especially with kids. <laughs> Yeah, no, that's the whole point of going, right? (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And then um, my oldest has a basketball tournament in Woodstock on the final weekend. Uh, So I'm kind of pumped because I've never been to Woodstock. I've driven through. um, So I'm excited. And I, you know, I'm like pulling it. We did an episode with their, with, um, was it the head of their tourism department there, I believe? Yes. Um, Yeah. yeah. So I'm going to dig that episode out. And maybe if any of the uh, other basketball moms are listening then you can pull that episode out too and have a listen to it and see what we can do while we're in Woodstock during March break Ooh, you can have really good potato chips and really good french fries yeah, man. because as we always know I come back to the food portion of the trip. <laughs> <laughs> but those are the first things that come to mind for me um and not that you could take the kids but I and I do think I think the distillery actually said they're closed for some renovations but ah uh, um if not double, double check moonshine Creek. Yep. Uh, covered bridge chips. Okay. Tour of the factory at the potato museum and the French, the restaurant they have there, the French fries. Okay. Get those fresh, fresh French fries with the fries. Yeah. (laughs) Um, and there, I mean, there's just uh, the same as around here, right? There are so many trails and Mm -hmm. beautiful areas to explore. I'm actually, um, going up that way in, May, the long weekend in May. So I will be very curious to see what you find yeah, when you're yeah. up there and share. <laughs> um, and I know like when you're talking about hotels, I know that's always kind of the go-to and you see that especially last year and this year, right? People mm-hmm. are looking for things that they kind of have more control over the environment, but still give you that sense of doing something different. And especially where people aren't quite keen to travel very far yet, even though you can, there's still a lot of complications, especially if you're going to go outside the country. Um, yeah, I see a lot of people asking for those who has the best pool, who has the best Mm -hmm. slide, who has theme rooms, all that kind of stuff. So I know you and I both stayed uh, at the days in with their theme rooms one time and super fun, fantastic pool too. No slide and not I, well, it depends on what you're looking for, right? Like I yeah. quite love that pool. I was quite fine with it. Yeah. Some families want the slide. They want that. Um, and you know, the difference too, of like, is it a big slide that goes right into the pool or is it one of those slides that has its own little landing yeah. of Shoot its own? Off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And we have all of those options. Yeah, they, we they do exist. Um, and I noticed, uh, the Algonquin in St. Mm. Andrews. Speaking of has... awesome pools. Yep. <laughs> oh yeah. And they do, they have that fantastic slide that goes outside the building and back in, but ends in its own little pool, right? You don't go into the big pool. So I think a lot of kids who maybe aren't used to slides really enjoy that aspect of it. Um, they've got some specials on it. it Look like they still had availability when I was looking last night online. Um, and the Huntsman Marine Aquatics, the so cool. 
Yeah. The yeah. aquarium is open for March break. Nice. So, and there's all kinds of activities that are happening at the Algonquin. They have Raina the Mermaid from Halifax coming up doing what? some stuff there. Yeah. So yeah, if, uh, if you have a kid who's really into swimming, then I would definitely, yeah, just, I would call them directly and find out, yeah, what they still have available and uh, what days she's there and what's happening, because I know they, they usually do a really good March break deal there. And yeah, I know there's a few other places that we're doing some specials that by now, um, even when I was looking, you know, a couple of days before March break, things were already booked up, but I did see that there were still spaces there. Okay. Yeah. That's really good to look into. And if you have never been to St. Andrews, you don't know what you're missing. You must go. Oh. It's a, I, it's, it's my favorite town in all of New Brunswick. Mm. So, and you, well, and if you're going to make it all the way there, you're close enough to head down to St. Stephen and check out the chocolate museum. They're open for March break too. That is right? on my to-do list. I don't know if I'm going to get to it on March break. Yeah. Um, but that, uh, that, that's one of those check marks. I still haven't managed to get here in New yeah. Brunswick <laughs> is the trip to the chocolate museum. See, there's so many cool things. Anyway, um, let's talk about what's happening yeah. in Moncton. Cause I was, I'm like, yeah. let's talk about the <laughs> fact that the oldest basketball court in Canada is there too, but, but yes, uh, they're trying cool. to turn that into yeah. uh, a museum as well. So when that happens, mm-hmm. then Jenna and I will talk about it in the meantime, we'll even go there. Maybe that'd be so cool. Yeah. Road trip. Yeah. <laughs> that would be amazing. Road trips, good tunes, good friends <laughs> oh, and, yes. and food and food. <laughs> Everything I love. But okay. yes, there are still lots of things <laughs> happening in and around Moncton. And if you are looking for those freebies, right, the free mm-hmm. events are always, you know, especially these days, it, you know, everything does cost more. It yep. is, you know, a drain on a lot of people just trying to keep up with daily expenses. Um, the town of Shediac is just, they are one of the few municipalities that really goes all in for March break generally. Um, you can usually count on Shediac and Sackville to have specific March break events that they put on as a municipality. And Sackville uh, has some programming. Some of it you had to pre-register for. Some of it is just going to be open. You know, they've got a family fun day at uh, Beach Hill Park and they have fireworks planned for Thursday Ooh. night. Yeah. Um, so of course that's always one of those like weather permitting, yeah. check everything before you go. I say that every year with the, every list that I do for yep. Pickle Planet, yeah. make sure you <laughs> click through the links just because I wrote it there. doesn't mean mm. it's still valid five minutes after I wrote it. Right. So go click through. I leave the link there for a reason. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, Shediac has a fantastic, fantastic spread of things happening all week long. Some of them are in person and some of them are online. Oh, neat. So yeah, so it's a nice mix of, you know, if you're not quite comfortable going out or you just can't, you know, maybe you're working from home still through March break and, you know, you still have kids that are home that you need to entertain. You know, I know one of the things they're doing is a magic show uh, with a magician out of Quebec. And so that one, uh, you don't have to, there is not a limit to it, right? So anyone can, can jump on that Zoom and be able to watch this kind of interactive magic show. Um, some of their programming does have limits as to how many people can take part in the online thing. They're doing Mm. that through, uh, Snapology, which of course is fantastic programming too, if you're looking for, for different things to entertain the kids. (laughs) Um, yeah, the other thing that I think, uh, people might not know about yet, but they're going to get familiar with very soon, I think is off-grid adventure. I think I've mentioned them before on the show, but I'm not sure. Okay. Uh, they opened, an off-grid campsite out towards Elgin and Portageville. And they have created this like ninja course, right? So it's like rock climbing and ropes and, and all that kind of cool stuff. So if you have kids who like, you know, Trigo and Timbertop Adventures, that type mm-hmm. of thing, the course isn't quite that big, but it's that same kind of like outdoor fun, challenge yourself Um, And everything they do is off the grid and they will tell you all about how they run this, you know, their house and their campground and everything else. Uh, They moved here during the pandemic to create Mm -hmm. this space. And uh, yeah, they have, they're open during the week of March break. And they also have two sessions that they're doing at night. So if you've got like older kids that are looking for something a little bit different, that's going to be a really great one. And their prices are pretty reasonable compared to 
some of the costs of other things around just because, you know, they don't have some massive facility that they're trying <laughs> to keep open. Right. Um, so yeah, I, cause most things these days, you know, we went bowling the other weekend, mm-hmm. that's 50 bucks a family to go bowl. Right. Yeah. That's without snacks. <laughs> you know, yeah. if you want to go to the movies, it's going to be, you know, easily 50 bucks a family to go mm-hmm. to the movies. Even if you're up, like if, if it's you and two girls, you're still going to spend 50 Easily. bucks, right? Easily. I'm not going to get away with only 50 bucks. To to <laughs> no, definitely um, not. You know, so off grid, I think it's $30 to do that for their, okay. their evening session. So yeah, it's, it, it's coming in, you know, below some of the, the other price points for things around, you know, all the indoor attractions are open, right? Sky zone is open again. I think, you know, a lot of people may have kind of forgotten because they, they closed their previous location, but they did reopen and it yeah. took them a while because just as they were about to do that, the pandemic hit. Oh, the right? timing was awful, but the oh. girls and I have been and mm-hmm. the new location is awesome. It's super open, uh, lots of seating for the parents. Now they also are serving drinks for the parents now. Uh, so I think that had started that at the other one right before, before the end. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was a nice surprise. It was a really nice surprise. You know what else I liked about it? The snack bar is kind of hidden behind everything. So it's not okay. like the first thing your kids see when they walk mm-hmm. in the door, which we That's know is, parents is, yeah, mm-hmm. it's the most annoying thing in the world. Like they don't want to do anything, but have snacks. You can see the slushy mm-hmm. machines, forget it. Um, the same thing when they had their, the arcade stuff they had brought in, they had put kind of right in the front there too. And same thing. My kids are like, oh, I could play Ninja Turtles. Like, no, I took yeah. care to not have screens yeah, Come to on. do some <laughs> exercising. Yeah. The, that stuff is still in the front. Um, but either way, it's still, it was, I was really, really impressed with the new location. I really liked it. Um, and they do have some, some really great deals. Like I think it was like $25 and you're, you could bounce on with no time limit. So yeah, that's fantastic. Yeah. For some kids that, you know, they would be there all day, mm-hmm. all day. Yeah. So it's, I think a really, a really great idea and a wicked good way to burn some of their energy that they're going to have pent up all this week. Right. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. And all those, like, you know, all the things that we used to think about doing that have kind of, you know, backed off a little bit over the, the past two years, like even swimming, public swimming mm-hmm. is fantastic. You know, uh, the town of Riverview, they've got extra public swims on for March break. Um, you know, the YMCA still has some public swims. The Aquatic Center has them. You know, everything that had a lot of restrictions, th- those are now opening up. You're still going to want to, you know, pre-register for anything you possibly can because it's March break. <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> right? Things will fill up and things are still taking bookings. Some things that didn't used to will still take some bookings, which is really kind of helpful. Oh, big because, time. And, you know, I think most parents in the area have either you know, seen or stood in the lineup, you know, outside hop, skip, jump mm-hmm. waiting to get in or, mm-hmm. you know, various places like that. You know, a lot of the things, um, yeah, there there's still, yeah, swimming, skating, all that stuff is still happening and starting to kind of come back up from, from the limitations that they had the last little bit, which is exciting. There's the uh, splash pad inside mm-hmm. of the YMCA in the North End. Yes. And I booked it for my girls this week coming up and it was super easy. I made a YMCA account. Like I, I didn't have to become like a member of the YMCA or anything, just made an account online, book the time slot that I wanted to take them there. It's 10 bucks. Mm-hmm. So it was like $5 per kid. You don't have to pay for the adult and they can run around. I've never been to that splash pad, but I've seen so many cool pictures of it. I was like, why not? We're going to try that out. It looks like fun. So, and yeah, that's, and a, that's, you know, that's a cheaper way to, you know, to do things too. Five bucks a kid, not bad. No, not bad at all. And that's one of the places that is still doing um, kind of registrations and bookings through mm-hmm. March break, which is really fantastic because that's another one. Yeah. That's gotten just slammed full of people when it's open because it is, it's yeah, it's still very new. There's lots of kids around who haven't been, my kids haven't been to it yet. Mm-hmm, either way, and yeah, yeah, it does. It just looks magical. And I can't even imagine how much time I would have spent there when my kids were little, if it had been open. Yes. And I think we would have yes. been there every day, every day. We, we were YMCA members and went, you know, to the public swims oh, so often that, yeah, being able to, to go there would have been just oh, fantastic. So I'm yeah. so glad that that facility exists uh, for families now with, especially with the little ones, right? Mm-hmm. It's, mm-hmm. it's hard sometimes to find something for your really little ones that you can kind of get out and let them 
go like that. So yeah, exactly. And then you don't have to worry about them getting a sunburn like we would in the summer either. So um, you had mentioned the town of Riverview and skating. Mm -hmm. I noticed this morning too, that you could book the entire ice surface at the Byron Dobson if you wanted to, or half of it, whatever it may be. So that, yeah, that's another thing. Another nice, safe way to do things. I thought it was quite reasonably priced as well. Mm -hmm. Um, We're not skaters, so that wouldn't be something that we would do. But uh, if you wanted to have a nice surface to yourself, then that is a really great idea. Plus a lot of, um, you know, practices for hockey teams or what have you won't be happening over March break. Mm -hmm. And if you wanted to make sure your kids still got some ice time, that's a great way to do it. Or if your kid wanted to make sure they still got some ice time too. And I think so far, I mean, the weather has been a wonky, but I think so far all (laughs) of the outdoor ice rinks are still all functioning right now as well. So they there, none of them are closed for the season yet. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Some of them close day to day, depending on the weather yeah. conditions. And, you know, you can check those on all the municipal yep. sites though. Those, they are updated daily. Mm-hmm. Um, and so it, it is actually, you know, not that hard to find that information out if you're wondering if something's opening, yeah. um, especially for the outdoor stuff and same thing, you know, the sliding hill in Riverview and lots of other places where people like to go sliding, you know, the disc golf, uh, at, uh, Claude D that's getting a lot of attention these yes, days. It is. Lots of, <laughs> yeah. Fun outdoor stuff. There's still, you know, fat bike rentals through camp centennial. Mm-hmm. There's, there's lots of stuff like that. That's on the go that you know you just have to yeah take the time read through the pickle planet list yes. it'll give you a lot of ideas there's yeah. uh there's still a few things that uh you know as they come up I'll add them in for sure um I don't you know like I said I don't update it every day <laughs> but uh I will I do know there's a few of those things that aren't necessarily mentioned on that list that just kind of exist elsewhere on the site that I still want to pull into the list but and uh yeah there's there's a lot of really neat that, you know, hockey games, there's lots of hockey mm-hmm. games going on over the March break, some of them in the afternoon, some of them in the evening. So those are another, you know, again, it, it's going to cost you a little bit to go, but if you haven't been, I mean, the season's going to wind down, might be a yep. good time to, to spend the money and invest and get out and enjoy something a little different, a little bit different. Exactly. Um, before we wrap up today, you did mention maple sugar shacks on there Ooh, yes. and that makes me happy. Doesn't it? Like that's a sure sign of spring right there when the sugar shacks start to open. And if you're driving around, you know, Albert County or anywhere uh, around here, you'll notice that the buckets are out. People have tapped Mm -hmm. their trees. um, And that just, the thought of it makes my whole soul warm. I like that. (laughs) And I don't like, I, I, I was going to say, I don't like like the maple syrup on a stick or anything like off the snow and on a stick. That's not really my thing, but the kids love so it. Sticky. So <laughs> sticky. I hate sticky. I like the, I like so the much. cream. We went last year and saw them making the maple cream, which is basically like fudge, I think, right? Like it's just, it's, oh, it's so yeah. <laughs> I, I don't need to buy more of that this year because I will just eat it all. Yeah. But yeah. The, uh, the maple sugar shop shacks, um, uh, trites in Moncton mm-hmm. is open as of the, the weekend of the fifth, sixth, okay. and then, uh, Renton brothers is opening the following weekend on the 12th. Um, I hear really good things about, uh, Dumfries, which is outside of Fredericton. If you're looking to kind of, you know, incorporate a day trip, do something a little bit different. They're opening this first weekend of March break as well. Um, the city of Moncton isn't opening theirs this year, really? um, but you can get their products again at uh, Resurgo place. Yep. And, uh, some, Oh, uh, King's landing. I was like, I know there's another one that I want yeah. to <laughs> King's landing. Uh, they weren't able to do their usual kind of maple sugar thing last year, mm-hmm. uh, but they are doing it again this year. So if you want to kind of have a little bit of a, a trip back in time, I mean, going to any of the maple sugar shacks is kind of like a trip back in time, true. But, yeah. <laughs> but you can go to King's landing and a couple of the other buildings are open as well and kind of get that, uh, that full experience to go there which is kind of neat to do too when it's not summer right I think most people associate going to King's Landing with summertime excursions so to go in the winter is pretty cool yeah absolutely and I mean it's a great way to get out and explore a province which is something that you and I are forever pushing on people so (laughs) if you take this one thing from this show today is get to know your own province uh Jenna where are people going to find your uh your whole list of things that they can do and if they have something coming up to tell you about Mm-hmm. If you just go to pickleplanetmoncton.com, the March break list is going to be right there on the front homepage up until March 14th. You'll be able yeah. to find it pretty easy there. <laughs> and right through there, you'll find a link right at the start of it too, where you can send me an email. If you have something that's going on that, uh, you know, you think should be on that list or on a future list. Um, 
I'm not 100% sure what the future lists are going to look like yet. Uh, I don't know that we're going back to weekly roundups just yet, um, just because they take uh, an incredible amount of time for me to put together. Mm -hmm. And like many other people during the pandemic, I've kind of shifted what I've been doing. (laughs) So uh, I'm not sure exactly when they'll come back, but there are still uh, lots of lists there for people to, to dig into. I might recommend you check out the playground lists. I know a lot of people are new to the area. Jenna does her playground uh, things and they are such a great way to get to know. I have actually literally driven past a park before and my head immediately went, oh, Jenna says this about this park. (laughs) I love that. (laughs) Yeah, it's really cool. It's a really great thing to have. So a great resource. So check out Jenna's website for some more information. And we hope that you have a very safe and happy March break. 